Hello friends from Tetsuo College. Uh, it's good to be with you and I'm recording this uh, message which will have been on the 5th. Uh, I really, really sincerely apologize for the technical problem that I had on that day. And this never happened and uh, maybe for other reasons uh, best known it has happened but which I am at wit's end to understand uh, the problem. And anyway, today as we uh, are after the World Environment Day, we all must have come to know about the, uh, the theme of this year's World Environment Day, which is uh, ecosystem restoration. And the uh, UNEP has used this hashtag become restoration generation calling upon this generation, particularly all the young people to become a generation that would restore back the ecosystem. Now I believe that you all have come to know about the importance and significance of, of the World Environment Day, how since 1972 after the Stockholm conference we have been celebrating the World Environment Day year after year and this year's uh, theme as I've said is ecosystem restoration and this is also the year in which the UN decade on ecosystem restoration has been launched. That means from this year to 2030 the United Nations will be stressing on the importance of ecosystem restoration. So in this uh, small presentation we'll be discussing about the ecosystem We'll be discussing about what are all the benefits of which I would like to uh, stress upon that point that what all are the benefits of these of this ecosystem and its functioning and what is the output that comes with it as a byproduct of the of the ecosystem functioning and how the benefits and the services that we, that we receive from the ecosystems and uh, to also look into We'll next look into the uh, degradation and how we have been, uh, you know, affecting adversely this ecosystem. And after that, we'll look briefly at how, at different levels, we all, as individuals, as a society, as institutions, would be able to uh, to help uh, rebuild and reclaim the ecosystem. So the definition of ecosystem, as you all see, the, there are the biotic abiotic uh, components. It is a complex of unity of organisms and the environment in which they live, which functions as an ecological unit. So the, the interactions is so complex and so interlinked and everything is connected to everything else, from this to this to this and everything to everything else. And this forms that what we call a web. And we're going to, uh, to, to, to understand, we'll not be able to understand the technicalities of it, but we'll just see the byproducts of it. And we'll talk about how this ecosystem and the ecosystem uh, benefits us all. So we have these different kinds of, of ecosystems, particularly the forest ecosystem, the mountain ecosystem. These are two of the ecosystems that you can find uh, in states like Meghalaya and states like, uh, like particularly like Nagaland, we have these, of course, with the with the dominance of the forest ecosystem. We have other ecosystems which are functioning as ecological units in rivers, in lakes, in oceans and coasts, and of course we have even the the, the desert in itself, which doesn't may not have the biodiversity, may not have the uh, the the kind of variety and variability in its in its life forms, but still a very independent and very important ecosystem in in the world. We have also peatlands. These are swarms that in which uh, mostly you'll find a lot of carbon in in these kind of areas. And it's said that once one 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 fourth to one one third of the uh, total carbon is found in such peat, peatlands, and of course we also have the, the modified uh, kind of ecosystems in the farmlands and the urban areas, and these are very also important. What we are going to talk, as I've said earlier, is about let us try to appreciate what this these ecosystems actually do before we even think of 
what, uh, what, what ecosystems we'll try to restore. If we understand how much we're actually losing, by losing the, 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 these vital ecosystems, then only will be appreciated and perhaps with this little small talk, we'll be able to, to, to actually uh, move to take some steps to actually restore the ecosystems around us. So what ecosystems actually in their functioning as they form as such ecological units, they provide us with so many benefits and these benefits are called ecosystem services which are actually categorized into into these different uh, different uh, different categories. These categories include provisioning services such as food, water, timber, fiber, genetic resources, which you're going to look. And then they, there are uh, regulatory services which in which we see that the, the earth is being regulated and the movement, the whole of nature is being regulated by, by nature itself and by as the byproducts of byproducts of the of, of, of what these ecosystems functioning are. The cultural services and the supporting services. When it comes to provisioning uh, services, the, the, these ecosystems actually provide us with all that we need. With all that we need. Say, let's say, uh, food. Food is so important to all of us. And without food, it's it's impossible to live. And it is said that these natural ecosystems is the uh, you know provide directly for uh, at least 1.6 billion people directly. Those people who depend on the forest and the, uh, and the uh, those in the seas that live and depend on the fish and the and the coastal ecosystem that are there, we need the wood, we need the timber, we need the fuel wood, we need the fiber, we need everything that we need actually comes from these ecosystem services and more importantly the fresh water. If you look at the fresh water, whether you say Mumbai or whether you say New York, all these huge metropolitans depend on their on their water resources from 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 the forest i mean uh, uh, most of the water from mumbai which has crores of uh, people comes from tansawa life sanctuary it comes from uh, from the sanjay gandhi national park and uh, it, we have cities like new york with uh, millions of people living and uh, water coming all the way maybe uh, more than 200 kilometers 100 to 200 kilometers away from the city being brought from from the forest and they have such a beautiful system by which they have uh, protected the watershed and ensure that the that the water source would be would be clean and pure with all in a natural way we have the genetic resources we can go on about this for a long time in fact when we come uh, when we think of of, gen of of these important resources as providing these genetic uh, genetic uh, the, the, the germplasm that we need when you think of green revolution and india's self sustainability in, in 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 food production it has happened because of course we say that uh, uh, because of irrigation because of fertilizer because of um, you know the mechanization but most importantly it is also because we have these these beautiful disease resistant wild varieties of rice and wheat which has made production possible otherwise it would be with so much uh, under attack from from so, so many insects and because these there are different varieties which are which are which which made it possible to have high yielding yet still uh, disease resistant kind of varieties because we still have the wild varieties we have many of the medicines that we need actually uh, most of the uh, of the medicines we have uh, have their origin in the in, 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 in the in, in the wild and in the plant in the plant and the and the animals that are, that are around them and this in fact if we talk of it especially with every with every every species that we lose whether it's a small plant or a big one every species that we lose actually it may reduce us the possibility of finding a solution or a, a remedy for different diseases so these are the provisioning and then the regulating services like you think of the of all that's happening when we talk about the at a, at a, at a global level or we talk at a local level 
If you look at now, especially with Corona around us, people gasping for oxygen, looking for, we're looking for oxygen concentrators and oxygen plants and all the while nature through these ecosystems has been providing us with the oxygen that we need. The sequestering of the, of the carbon dioxide, uh, nature and the forest are still, still the best lungs of the earth. And because of them, we are able to have what we are able to have this breathable air that we have having our disease regulation. So much to talk about. Uh, so, you know, areas which have uh, more biodiversity are less likely to have famine, less likely to have uh, devastating attacks of of blight or insects. Or, and these are because nature in itself has has its way of controlling biocontrols are still present there, birds are still there, butterflies are still there, water regulation, we have so much of droughts and floods in these uh, these times. Uh, you know, it's not that uh, we have more rains in, on, on, on our land now in India or anywhere else. It's just that the water, the same quantity of water that has been coming, is not able to infiltrate into the soil, it's not able to be to be regulated. That's why we have we have so much of, of of floods and all because everything just go as a run off run off from our roofs directly into the into the water so in water courses. So all these regulating service services are being provided by by the ecosystems we have. Water purification is so important. Waste management uh, these are all made possible uh, through the regulating services. We have so many of the saprophytes. We have so many of the of the uh, elements of nature which take care even of uh, regarding the waste. The pollination, we have, you know, nations like countries like US where people have to hire, hire a beekeeper and bring the bee artificially into their fields in order to have a better, better yield and better crop. Pest regulation, so much that is happening, uh, which I've also talked about uh, a bit uh, earlier. So pests are being controlled by by nature in a very wonderful, uh, wonderful natural way, without having to, res to to resort to pesticides and all. All these are the regulating services that our ecosystems are actually providing. Spiritual, and religious, recreation, ecotourism, aesthetic. We, uh, we, we who live actually near the, the forest, we still have plenty of, of these things. But think of the people living in cities. They spend so much just to get into a, to, to a park, to a botanical garden, and all that. And how much the value, uh, that, 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 how much they value these kinds of, these kinds of, of natural uh, settings. And of our own inspiration, educational, cultural heritage, we as tribals have a huge, huge uh, culture which is based on on our natural resources, based on our forests, based on our on the things around us. And the in ITK, the the indigenous technical knowledge that we have, it's so rich, and people are trying to learn from 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 the uh, from the uh, traditional knowledge that. Uh, tribals are having and other indigenous communities are having. These are the uh, other services that we get. And then, of course, the supporting services. We have soil formation. Soil is so important. You know, it takes about anything between 230 to 300 years to just form one centimeter of soil. And to make it even uh, plantable, like a fertile, loamy soil, it will take thousands of years, which actually uh, nature is providing us. Nutrient cycling, which is very important, primary production, uh, which is done by plants, so important, and all these supporting services are being provided to us uh, by by the ecosystem, by nature itself, and it's so important. So all these things that we have uh, comes from nature, which we often take for granted, whether it's the water, the oxygen, everything that we, in which our very survival depend upon. But unfortunately, uh, these very ecosystems, the very thing that provide us so much in which our very, very existence depend upon uh, being uh, attacked and degraded and in which we are on the path of destroying it. We'll talk more about this. So many things, so many things you have heard about what's happening to, to the uh, greenhouse gases in the sky, what's happening to the ozone layer, what's happening to the seas, what's happening to the mountains, the loss of forest and all that. Uh, 
plenty of things to talk about. Let's just take this, uh, these some of the figures, just the key figures that have been presented in one of the uh, UNEP function that we had, uh, which is uh, prior to the uh, World Environment Day, which uh, one Dr. Uh, Barney Dixon and others have done some research and given come up with this paper, which I'd like to I'd like to quote some of the things that they have presented. When it comes to forest, about 420 million hectares converted to other land uses since only 1990. 420 million hectares, that's more than the size of India. It's, 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 it's maybe the whole of India and Pakistan together. That much of forest is lost and forest degradation could affect uh, 1.75 billion people. And that's very serious as a very big figure. And farmlands, all the farmlands are being are stressed and declining productivity. And with declining productivity and the capacity to actually produce food would actually have the other consequences of our very own uh, food security that we have. Uh, oceans and coasts, 66% 6 of the ocean ecosystems are damaged. So what happens when these ecosystems are damaged? It affects the production of fish, it affects the, the livelihood of the millions of people living in the coastal areas. Urban areas are so stressed, so stressed, without, and there's always a problem with uh, safe drinking water and, and, and the basic air with the breeds and many other things that uh, basic human life would require. And these are also very important and uh, this uh, this study by Dr. Barney again went on to say that uh, between 1992 and 2013, in this uh, in this period of about uh, close to close to 20 years, uh, you know, the produce capital by produce capital that means uh, the industries infrastructure that we make it has increased in these uh, 20 years has increased by over 100 percent, 100 percent. So is the human capital human capital by about uh, say about close to 10 percent that means we have become uh, more uh, more more educated we have become more empowered that's 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 also so wonderful but during the same time of 20 years the natural capital the natural capital has actually decreased by 40 percent Has increased by 40%, and this is this is very 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 important for us to actually note 40%. And actually, we are saying that as of now, we as humans are using 1.6 times, and a very recent research I just saw is that it's gone up to 1.7 to 1.75% uh, of of the actual capacity of the Earth to produce to naturally produce in a sustainable manner that means uh, we are actually supposed to take say say one lakh rupees but we are actually taking every year or every time more than 1.6 lakhs rupees and can you imagine if a family lived like that if we live like that how long will it be able to sustain itself and so we are really moving in a very in a very uh, dire dire condition condition and this therefore this restoration is very necessary Restoration is very necessary because it's very important for our own survival. Food is so basic for our very ex existence. Food security, if only we're able to restore the ecosystems, then only our security in terms of providing ourselves with the basic need of food would be possible. The global temperature, as you know about global warming, without, without the ecosystems being restored, it would be impossible to uh, to keep the rise in the global temperature below uh, two degrees. That's what it says. This research, and it says that just the the, the 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 restoration of ecosystems would help would help to actually prevent this this rise in the rise in the global temperature. Species extinction. Actually, we forgot to mention There's so much. Uh, IUCN report says that 20% of all the mammals are threatened. 
threatened with extinction. One in every three amphibians, 33% of amphibians are all threatened with extinction. 37% uh, percent of freshwater fishes are, are threatened with extinction. So much, so much actually. And, and we can do so much by simply restoring the, restoring the ecosystems. We can contribute so much. So all those three slides I've taken from what I've mentioned, this is Dr. Barney Dixon report on ecosystem restoration. These are just repetitions, but I just want to show it in a more dramatic way from what we see. Uh, the loss in, in it, the loss in the in the in in forests is so huge. The world is losing forests and the size of the whole of Northeast India every year. We have forest fire, and these are the pictures which I believe you all are very, very aware of, of the Zuko Valley fire this year. It's been such a serious, uh, serious fire, and we all have seen what uh, what natural disasters can do. It has become not; it's become an, an, a national news and air force and uh, you know natural disasters um, uh, authorities have been called from from all over India and how important it is for us to actually preserve our ecosystems our population population is growing so much pollution of all kinds if all and the impact is everywhere so it's very important that we restore our ecosystems and this is why the world environment day is very important and this is why the decade on uh, ecosystem restoration is very important and so the ecosystem restoration is the process of halting and reversing whatever ecosystem has been degraded in order to improve and so that again we may have those ecosystem services which so need we need so much and which are very survival depends upon those uh, provisioning uh, services, those uh, regulating services, those cultural services, those regulating services which we need. And it can be in different forms, say from a degraded natural to a more intact natural ecosystems. You have a degraded forest and try to make it more intact. And this often can be done through a system called aided natural regeneration, especially you are simply providing protection by simply uh, you know, stopping grazing, stopping felling, stopping uh, interference of man. The ecosystem, the nature has in its, itself the capacity to recuperate, the capacity to restore itself, or maybe from the great modified ecosystems, more functional, uh, maybe with the help of an artificial, uh, artificial help of, of humans. It can take, take in that form too. And this ecosystem restoration would help in so many ways. It will help, as we have said, because of the services that are being provided by the ecosystems. It will help in the health and welfare, it will help in food and food security, biodiversity, economy, and all other forms. And these are a few of the, of the uh, uh, notable points that the, uh, that the United UNEP uh, document has shown that just by investing $4 US dollars per resident and growing up trees can improve health of millions of people. Millions of people by high, how? Filtering and by cooling air. Just four dollars, you know, 250 rupees, 250 rupees to 300 rupees would be enough to help millions, millions of uh, millions of lives. When it comes to our food, which I've said, we depend so much on those ecosystem services. Just by destroying the mangroves, you know the mangroves are those forests which grow in the in the in the coastal areas they help in the in the regeneration of fish they help in the in in reducing the forces of nature particularly tsunami uh, tsunami and all that it says that it could add 60 trillion young edible and commercially available fish and vertebrates to coastal waters every year by simply restoring these forests the biodiversity it's very important for us to have the all forms of life dwell together and live together and, and, and contributing to the ecosystem by restoring just 15% of the converted land in the right places could avoid 60% of expected uh, species extinction. 
the economy itself will benefit, the climate adaptation. This particular uh, particular study which shows that in the restoration of the oyster reef, the reef, you know, there's a reef that are found, like the coral reefs that are found in, 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 in the ocean uh, ecosystems. This has been done in oyster reef in Mo Mobile Bay, Alabama. Reduced the average wave height by 53 to 91 percent. And not only that, it helps in the in the production and improve a better stock of uh, and better tourism and better uh, fish availability and all the uh, animal life uh, availability. And so also with climate change, water, we cannot think enough of how important it is for us to rest restore the ecosystems in order to secure to secure water. And of course, even in, in other ways as a security for all. So we have seen what, how important it is for us, how important ecosystems are, and how degraded they have been, how unkind we have been to nature. But what can we do? We're coming to the end. What can we do as a people? What can we do as a society? We don't have many solutions. As a, as a small people living in a corner, in a small corner in the northeast of India, in a small corner in in a very insignificant place but we can always act locally and think locally we have seen the global picture and it's a time for us to act locally so we should think global and act local let us look at first as a society i mean as a khasi i'm very proud of my traditions and as nagas you're very proud of your of your uh, of your traditions you're proud of our heritage and so also with every with every society with every tribal society and every society at large because our traditions have always been to be one with nature we have indigenous technical knowledge we have a strength in our customs and we have always had these ethos the protection ethos and protection is always the best form of restoration we have seen this in konama how konama have changed uh, that sanctuary, that tragopan, that uh, the, the kind of forest that was re that was restored, and and, and the, the following benefits that come from it, people from all over the world come to know about it. They become a national attraction. The tourism and ecotourism that flows from it, it benefited not only Khonama but even all the other communities nearby. So anything that the community can do especially in a society, it is going to really work. And I really believe that as a society, if you think, if you can do something for, for nature to restore the ecosystem, that is the best solution. And, and Nagaland has proved it, uh, especially in Konoma or whether it's Konoma, or whether it's the, the Amur Falcon. And I believe that we'll see some more of this. As institutions, I believe that we really need, we really can help, uh, we really can help in the ecosystem restoration to for the education of the next generation. You know, education that you're giving, if it is a wholesome education, that also includes, uh, in it, I'm not just saying include as part of syllabus, but more emphasis and practical things about environment. And joining hands with the governments and NGOs, governments are always looking for, for willing institutions to come forward and work with them to make environmental education attractive, make it, you know, give rewards to students who are involved in involved in environmental uh, environmental uh, works, evolve them to appreciate multiple benefits of ecosystems, and this would really help. And then as students and about uh, as, as individuals, the best thing that we can contribute is to talk to people about forest, ecosystems lost, raise awareness, talk, make the environment and environment awareness a part of your topic in, in your discussion with your friends, in discussion with your family, in discussion when you meet, when, you, when, we, when we gossip about many things. Make it one also one of the many topics. We'll plant indigenous trees. Very important for us to plant indigenous trees. Indigenous trees are very important for the support of other life forms, of, of, of our birds, local birds and butterflies and animals. Steps against forest fire is very important. It really requires the community because uh, uh, all the forest fires, 99% of the forest fires actually started by people. It's nothing like a natural uh, fire. 
as students as individuals we also can participate in local efforts we join the nature club club and then have and be proud to be able to reuse reduce recycle in whatever way you can and finally we can also green a campus i've seen your campus in a field of pictures uh, and i've seen particularly this tree these these this is our area and what i'm just trying to say is it's good to have a green campus but it will be better if we make that campus not just green but alive ecologically this garden is beautiful but you will not find a single flower which can host a bee or can host birds can host butterflies i mean we have so many so much of we have, have given so much uh, importance to to, to to beauty and to being spick and span and presentable and we have forgotten what i'm requesting you is to think even in your own compound your own campus of rewilding rewilding our campuses you can have less attractive gardens but which can host butterflies you can have more of areas with more of trees that are actually indigenous we may not looking we may not be looking very very attractive but these are being used by by birds and butterflies and bees and it will be very helpful uh, for them and very helpful uh, to at least sustain sustain the 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 the, the, the urban uh, biodiversity that we have and maybe with these few words i just want to say thank you thank you for uh, for for listening and uh, looking through it we maybe we can re reimagine recreate restore uh, thank you so much once again that's a call it for this opportunity i really apologize once again for what my inability to join on the fifth but uh, thank you and may this uh, maybe we will be able to get have more opportunities to meet afterwards thank you very much